The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-445-1044. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good afternoon from TFNN. Welcome to the August 18th. Fantastic Friday edition of today's Trader Z Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that it should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. And of course, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life happens for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two-by-four shift, it means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Today, you and I, we're going to go check out the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what the bulls and the bears, what the buyers and the sellers are communicating to you and I just past 1 o'clock in the afternoon. I want you to know that I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here, and more importantly, I'm here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in, 877-927-6648. If you can't dial in, you can always send me an email, steve at tfnn.com. Just in that heading, put radio show question, of course, inside the Tigers. Then, well, any ping will do. So let's go, ahead, get, let's go ahead and get this show started on fabulous and fantastic Friday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. Right now, the Dow trade up 14 points, trading out at 21,765. S&P up a quarter of a percent, six points to the upside, 2436. NASDAQ 100 up nearly a half a percent, up 25 points. Russell 2000 up two. Semis are up three tenths of a percent, up eight points, trading at 1077. You've got uh, gold flat, silver flat, light speed crude, anything but flat, up nearly 3%, or a buck 35, trading out at 48.44. Leading the charge here, dollar wise to the upside. You've got Intuitive Surgical up 18 bucks, Estee Lauder up eight, Tesaro up about six, uh, Priceline up four, Ultimate Software Group up five, Burlington Stores up four. To the downside, it is AutoZone. Speeding to the downside, off 15 bucks, 3%, Foot Locker down 26%, or 12 bucks. Matson Inc. off seven, John Deere off six, uh, the jazzy one, Jazz Pharmaceuticals off four, O'Reilly Automotive down three. So we can take a look at those stocks. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. And there are a couple of requests that are already in, but why don't we first take a look at the markets? Figure out what they're doing, what we can anticipate and expect, and then we'll go take a look at some of these requests that are uh, have uh, have already been submitted. So get yours in before that line gets too long. Now, if we take a look at the markets, the very first thing you knew, because nothing gets past you. I mean, not a zip, zilch. Nothing gets past you. And the very first thing that you knew how, what to anticipate was yesterday's one-day rate of change inside that VIX index. The final number, the final tally at the end of the day yesterday at the close was 32%, 32.45. Now, you, because uh, just simply because of your knowledge and all of the historical evidence and the way that you've actually traded this thing, you know that when you get one of those one day rates of change of greater than 10 percent, I mean, how cool is this? No matter what it is that you're trading to be able to anticipate it, you're going to see a bounce or sideways move or bottom inside of the market. Rarely are you going to see follow through to the downside out there. Well, we've had the bounce so far. We'll go check it out, see what levels it needs to stay above in order for it to become something more than a bounce. But you already knew that. You already anticipated it. Now, today, in today's action, Action Jackson, as we speak right now, you're down 11.64%. So now we've got the opposite, a greater than or what we, I guess what we'd call less than Less than a negative 10% out there, right? That means 11% is less than a negative 10% out here. And those days, very rarely do you, it, I don't know what it's going to look like at the end of today's session. You know, I hate to say at the end of the day. But if you do at the end of today's session have something 
less than a minus 10%, you should anticipate that Sunday and Monday for the markets to continue to move higher. Yeah, that's what you should anticipate. What happens if it doesn't? Mm, then we have to take a look at other levels inside the market. But from this one little vehicle, you can learn a lot, or at least what to anticipate inside of the way that the S&P 500, the ES mini trade. So that was numero uno. Now the question becomes, well, how do we know when it's going to bottom, when the S&P is going to bottom, or more importantly, when the ES mini is going to bottom? And you already knew the answer to that as well. And the answer was, if this is going to go ahead and push lower, do a less relative energy, and then the cavalry arrives, well, then you have your answer, one of your answers out there. And what was it doing this morning? Well, it was pushing lower. In fact, all throughout the evening, it was doing that, and you saw the bulls try to rush in. Now, with regard to reversal candles out here, you can see that it formed a piercing candle three different times. So two, yeah, three different piercing candles, one little hammer candle along the uh, bottom out there. Now, what was kind of nice about this is that the bounce overnight, uh, basically inside the ES Mini we're talking about, ran into resistance around the 2434 type range out here. And right now we are trading just slightly above it. So we know that it, here's what we know. I mean, and you always look for prior swing points on any kind of a bounce out there. That becomes your first level. That's your first wall of, in fact, where the... Uh, uh, where the sellers are hanging out. And if you can clear that, then you go on to wall number two, which, by the way, inside the ES Mini is right around the 2445 level out there, Stevie's green line. I would not be surprised to see that occur. Of course, you can take a look at the bottom panel of my screen. You can see that the price oscillator is still below zero. So if at any point in time today there is some selling that comes into the market and price gets below Stevie's red line, currently right now about 24.29 it looks like, that would be bad news because there's nothing worse than a falling price oscillator below zero. We don't have that at the moment, but you've got to be able to look at that. And is there anything to give us an indication that the market should not continue to move higher? Now we take a look at this chart, not at this very moment. Now, we can also go take a look at each of the other equity futures contracts because they all did the same. They did slightly different. In the case of the NQ, this thing was singing in the key of G, Stevie Wonder's key of G, as well as price moving lower, doing less relative energy out there, forming one of those piercing candles. Of the four different or the five different double sets of uh, reversal candles, the piercing candle on a scale of one to five would be about a two. But when you get follow through on that next session, well, then that uh, upset uh, uh, level two and gets to at least a, a nice level three, maybe even a little beyond that. Of course, what we like to see is price above Stevie's range line such as it is inside the NQ. Now, really the next level of resistance inside the NQ is about 58.45, give or take. Now, when the cool thing about the ES Mini this morning is as it was forming that bottom, as price was pushing lower in the 30-minute chart with less relative energy, what was going on on the weekly time frame chart, and you had these numbers written down from yesterday, Price got right to the tick. I mean, to the tick. It was sweet. Right to the tick of the bottom of the weekly market profile. 24.19.50 was that number. The low tick today, 24.19.50. Now, look, that's an important level of support, both because of the pattern that we just looked at and this. Something happens after I'm done off the air and you get below that today. That spells trouble, probably double trouble. Not just yet. Steve Rogers. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Trader's Edge, heard daily at TFNN.com and author of Mastering Probability, a daily investment and trading newsletter service that I send out each morning by 8 a.m. My morning newsletter service covers exactly what the markets have been doing since last night's close, providing you with an edge on your trading day ahead. You get actionable trading ideas, including the exact entry, stop, and profit targets. Plus, I'll teach you the patterns and hidden market correlations that will make you a better trader. As a subscriber, you'll gain access to my 90-minute money management workshop, where I'll teach you the secrets that'll save your assets. The bottom line, I've got your back, including a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the type of analysis I provide each trading day by signing up for Mastering Probability today. With nothing to lose, this is an offer you should not pass on. Mastering Probability can be found under trading newsletters on the front page of TFNN.com.
TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting tfnn.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN. Dot com now. Steve takes your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1 877 927 6648. Internationally at 727 445 1044. Welcome back, folks. So, just before we went off the air for that commercial, we were taking a look at the weekly time frame. This uh, quad chart out here, Randy asking questions. Hi, Steve. In that quad chart, the other three charts were below, as in the TF and the YM, did not even make it to the top of the uh, box weekly. And so, let me just cover these charts out here because what Randy's asking questions about is uh, these weekly charts. So, these are each weekly charts for the equity futures contract. Lower right hand corner, by the way, um, here it's kind of like bad news for the Russell from a weekly standpoint in that it found resistance at the bottom of its weekly box, which is the way that something bearish is supposed to respond. When you break below a profile, break below the low of a profile, and you go up and you test that area and reject it, that just tells you that it's still the sellers that are really in control of the market. Now, not that the TF can't uh, a turn. The first turn would come, Randy, inside the shorter term chart, such as a 30 minute chart out here, such as it did this morning as it too was moving lower. So we, we finally had by about what, 9 30, 10 o'clock, all of the markets in the equity futures contract pushing on that string, pushing lower, less, uh, less uh, relative uh, weakness out here. And then the bulls came in, in this case here, a nice little bull sash. Now, what was nice about the Russell, by the way, was that it gave you a nice little TD sequential count right at that moment in time. Now, don't forget this TF chart here has a 10 minute delay. So 1360 is not exactly or likely not where it's trading at right now. Uh, but from a weekly perspective, uh, does not look good out here. What would it need to look to look good? It'd have to get right back above 1399.38. Uh, with regard to the other equity futures contracts, they have not busted through support. So from an intermediate term standpoint, they have not busted through support. And the question that uh, Randy had was, am I saying that the ES is really the driver? No. What I'm saying is that, number one, when you went to sleep last night, when I went to sleep last night, we knew what to anticipate, which was that a market that was at least going to have some type of bounce. The question was when. And what we had to do is go ahead and pick that fight. Well, the logical fight area was when price was moving lower, doing it with less relative energy, as this was doing all night. But because you went back and you said, well, you know, where am I in my market profiles? You were looking for, let's say, who's going to second the motion out here? Well, the ES was seconding that motion and it was saying to you, to me, I'll second that motion, but the price level of 24 dollars So you knew 
you then had a, a spot to go ahead and uh, uh, start looking for where that bottom would come in. You could have been an aggressive trader and taken your trade or taken your shorts off, so to speak, at that moment in time. Or you could just wait on the 30-minute chart for some type of bullish reversal candle to form. Because if you don't get a bullish reversal candle, then that 24.19.50 is likely not going to hold out here. Well, it just performed like it was supposed to. Now, as I say, we've got to go back and take a look at levels that it really needs to stay above in order to be able to try to reach up into that 24.55 range out there. Now, the ES Mini could crack through that low, and then we'd really want to go ahead and take a look at, well, okay, what's the NQ doing? Because the NQ level is 57.34 and change inside the Dow. It's 209.70. Uh, I'm sorry, that's the bottom of the box. Shoot, just 21.494. So this shows you that the Dow is stronger than the, and the equity futures contract, stronger than the other three out there. So, Randy, I don't know. I hope that answers your question. But if not, you know, type in a, a new question and we will go ahead and try to get to it. And we'll come back to the equity futures, Marcus, but because you listeners, many of you were so nice to go ahead and write ahead for call ahead seating out there. What we need to do is try to get to those requests out there. So the first really comes from yesterday, late yesterday from uh, Dan. Uh, and he was taking a look at uh, Dan Y. He was taking a look at he's trading the LABD. But his question was, and he's basing his decisions off of the IBB, that's the biotech sector for the NASDAQ. And his question specifically was, where is IBB headed to? And what Dan was looking for as a price target to the downside is 285 to 283. Now, Dano, if that is going to occur, what you need to at least bust through, not you, but what the IBB needs to bust through, at least is the top of the weekly box. So here's an example where price moved down below. For just using market profiles at the moment. Price broke below the uh, daily, and this was uh, quite a few days ago. It's never, been to be, it's never been able to trade above the bottom or close above the bottom of that daily box. So you can see how that has acted as a little ping pong resistance level. But price is also today uh, found support at the top of the weekly level. So 30302. So if you're going to ask me where is price headed to, well, shoot, it's already answered that for us. 303. Now, volume wise, let's do this here. Let's put this on a weekly time frame. And uh, now those are going to, just going to change to blue out there. And what we do know here, and here's the danger for you, in my opinion, here's the danger for you, and that is that on the week that began, June 19th, there were 16 million shares to the upside. Last week, to the downside, was 4.8. This week, you're only at 3.1. On a daily basis, the IBB is, whoops, uh, I don't want to do a tick chart or anything. Let's see here. Uh, on a daily basis, this thing does about 992. This is really coming into a breakout area with light volume and to a level of support. Now, there's no bullish reversal signal here. It's just simply that you are pulling back into an accelerated area. Can it pull back to 285 to 283? Of course it can. In fact, if we go back to the weekly chart out here, that would really be pulling back, in essence, to the low, or where I would target it, the low of the week of June 19th, which is 293. So it's not exactly down to your 283, 285, but uh, I would I would say if you got down there, you would be very fortunate. I don't know if that is going to happen out here. So be careful on this one because you are trading back into a sign of strength. Of course, you know the rules out here. Don't listen to Steve-O. Go do the work and figure out the top five or ten holdings inside the IBB and see what those patterns are communicating to you because that will give you a ton of information. But specifically on the IBB, it's found support where it should. Now, the golf guy wanted to go ahead and take a look at uh, GE, the general. But the golf guy is uh, saying, hey, I want to take a look at this uh, within the next six months. So where is the buy on that? Now, now I am not Karnak. 
out here. I can promise you that. But we'll go take a look at uh, GE. We'll try to give you where this might be headed to. As we speak right now, it's at 2466. And at 2466, uh, this is where it most recently broke out on a weekly basis when it gapped up on October, the week that began, October 5th, 2015. Did it with 341 million shares. This week, you are pulling back with 131 million shares. Now, that open window was really right here at 2549, and you're trading below it. That doesn't mean, well, I've got it, it says perigee. We know that wasn't perigee out there. Let's get a different uh, tool out here, for goodness sakes. Let's go get a, I don't know, you guys like the color red. Uh, let's just use the red horizontal end. Will this give me price? Here you go. Uh, so this has broken down through that gap, which should have been support. Now, it's not that price can't just pull back to the low of that candle session at 2426. But let's face it, golf guy, if you're looking to buy GE, I say just wait and see what happens at the low of that August 24th, 2015 time frame. 1937 is your number. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. In quiet markets, investors search for new trading opportunities. We'd like to introduce you to a new product that provides opportunities even in flat markets. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a new and innovative Chicago-based exchange registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their trading platform. Nadex never charges a fee to use their platform, which even includes real-time charts and full customization capability. Nadex's unique short-term binary options allow traders and investors to capitalize on strategies even when the underlying markets are quiet. Nadex's innovation has allowed them to come up with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Platinum, grains, crude oil, gold, copper, cattle, hogs, gasoline, natural gas, coffee, cotton, cocoa, and sugar. These are just some of the commodities mentioned in the most recent issue of Andy Hecht's Techno Mental Commodity Report. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning, where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you will lock in the low rate of only $79 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Tiger TV is an exciting way to experience TFNN programming, see high-definition video, giving you crystal clear charts, as well as seeing some of the faces of TFNN's highly acclaimed financial experts with crisp, full-fidelity sound. Catch Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, Larry Pesavento, Think or Swim, David White, Andy Hecht, and Daryl Martin in crystal clear, high-definition audio and video tiger tv exclusively at tfnn.com this segment is brought to you by think or swim for more information just click the think or swim banner on the front page of tfnn.com <laughs>
Welcome back, folks. So let's move on to some of the requests out here. Pradeep wants to take a look at Paps Blue Ribbon. PBR is the ticker symbol. I'm just kidding you. It's Petrolo Brasilia uh, Petrobras. And I know that I totally hose that name, but um, I gave it my best shot out here. Actually, it wasn't my best shot. It was a shot, though. If we go take a look at PBR, and I know you're in this. You've got a 3% uh, gain, I believe, was the uh, number. If we take a look at where this is headed to or whether it's whether where it's likely headed to the issue that you really have here well first let's just go ahead and take care of our market profiles let's clean them off the screen you're moving into a most recent swing point from august the second out there 20 million shares today you're doing the 14 million shares so i would anticipate that it's going to be able to take that level out you would like to see it should it be able to clear the high of 910 you'd like to see it do it with more than 20 million shares that would give you an a to b equals cd to the upside that would be the old lightning bolt pattern it would go ahead and look like this this and the one to one gives you a projection of about 987 the one to one point two seven two ten twenty seven I would think that that would be your range now let's come back to why would that be the range out here we're going to turn off these profiles because in one sense we really don't need these in order to answer Pradeep's question what we do have is we have a breakdown and at those breakdown areas you like to sell at breakdown just like you like to buy at uh, breakouts when price comes back to it well in this case here PBR is coming back to its break down area now what we're going to use here is really the open gap at this stage which ranges from about nine and a quarter to 1026 so here's what we know Pradeep number one you've got two price levels to pay attention to to on the upside 30 million shares by the way on May the 25th at that nine and a quarter and 20 million shares on August the 2nd so if this is going to really have some gusto to get up to the 1026 you want to see some volume accelerate if it doesn't then what you can take a look at is where is this thing going to be able to find support and you look back just simply into the prior swing point August 11th somewhere around 841 we can see a nice little sign of strength off of the bottom here that is on July 12th and that's anywhere between 817 uh, and 849. There were 33 million shares there. So that really becomes your area of uh, support. Again, if I put the daily profiles on here, 862 would be one. But uh, on the weekly, it would be, uh, be all the way back down to the uh, lows out there. I'm not saying to get out. What I'm doing is uh, giving you the uh, areas of ranges that this thing is going to, as Tom might say, build the little cause in order to be able to get through. So nine and a quarter. That is some stiff resistance area. And if you can get clear it, then maybe that becomes support and 1026 becomes your number. That was for Pradeep. Ivy wants to go take a look at raw stores. R-O-S-T is the uh, ticker symbol out here. And the question there, I believe, was, what was it? It was, where do you see an entry point? And I, that's pretty simple, I would have to say. Um, that would be coming all the way back to today's breakout, to the gap, to the bottom of the gap. So you have, if we just take, let's put this on a little bit longer term time frame. Now we're going to go look for other other elements just to see, hey, what was this doing on a weekly time frame as an example? And it was really coming, it was coming back into an area, prior set of swing points in essence, back here, a little base, back on May 16th, and there were 28 million shares. Now that 28 million share level was actually tested close to being tested uh, three or four weeks ago, the week of July 24th, but only 19 million shares, 19 going against 28. So that's kind of interesting on a weekly basis. You also had um, some decent volume here on the week of November 16, 2015 to 27 million shares. So it seems like some fund or funds are really trying to protect this area. But where would you like to go ahead and uh, buy? We can still just put a simple trend line in here. Again, this is the weekly chart that we have on our screen out here we can go take a look at channel lines and this thing hasn't given us any indication that's going to be able to bust through that level so let's go back to the daily for ivy and uh, let's go ahead and put our market profiles both daily and weekly up here for you and uh, let's go ahead and move this uh, chart over so it looks like it has a little bit higher to run perhaps before it runs into resistance of a descending channel line uh, your buy on this or buy areas i would say would be 56.89 the top of the weekly box it is cleared 
uh, to the uh, center, 5590. Um, but the reality is you don't want to see this thing get back inside 5689 because that weekly box, as we speak right now, has a bearish structure. And if you get back inside there, shoot, this thing could come all the way back to today's breakout, in which case your buy on this would be about 5436. But this has not cleared resistance enough to say to you and I that it has changed its trend. So uh, just be patient when it comes to raw storage. There's probably more bad news for the retail area. I guess what is the retail ETF out there? Is it is it I? It's not IYR, is it? What is it? Somebody in a den? No, that's the real estate. What's the retail one? Somebody, somebody out there. I, where's my wingman woman team? Somebody's got to you know what that uh, ETF for the retail space is. And if Basil was listening, uh, he would just right off the top of his uh, tongue out there. Uh, IV, if we get that, we can take a look at what the entire sector is doing. But be uh, patient on um, Ross stores. Now, Mike wants to go take a look at Marathon Oil. M-R-O is the uh, ticker symbol. And I think, Mike, you were asking, where is the bottom on this? And uh, I don't know the answer, but let's go see if we can figure this out. It's certainly below 1236. That was a swing point that we had. Um, and that was from the week of, uh, looks like, uh, October 31st, 2016. Uh, volume there was 126 million shares. You know, we passed it with light volume, no, no, no doubt. But um, Wowzer, where is this headed to? Where is this headed to, Steve-O? Well, I'd say, Mike, now it's a weekly chart that we have up on our screen here. Profiles are going to do you and me no good. So we're actually going to go ahead and turn those off. Um, I'm going to go ahead on my other chart and see if we can figure out if there's any kind of, on a daily basis, any kind of bottoming signal. The answer is no, there's not. Um, so here's what we have to go with. On the weekly chart, one of the areas you should focus on, Mike, I would say, is the week that began, February 29, 2016. This is when it came off the bottom with volume. The volume there was 539 million shares. The top of that session, the high was 1148. You're at 1074. You're trading inside that session. Keep your eyes set on 756, the low of that session, unless you see something else occur on a daily basis. And at this stage of the game, when we pull this chart over here on the screen, there's not anything to hang our hat on. Now, not today, but on Monday, if this thing trades, uh, closes lower than the session from uh, three days ago, you're going to get a TD9 setup count. Now, the problem with that is going to be that uh, in order for the acceleration to slow down, price would need to trade inside bars five or six. That is not likely to happen. Can but not likely to happen in the case of Marathon Oil. Didn't we see that uh, light sweet crude was up by about 3% a little while ago? And what is Marathon Oil doing today? Nada. Zilch. No bullish reversal candle. No nothing. Uh, Mike, this is headed lower. That is at least the message as of 1.38 p.m. out there. If I put this on a monthly basis out here, see if it looks any better. The answer is... No, not really. That's $7 range, Mike. Keep your hands in your pocket until you see some type of sign of strength off the bottom. And if not then, that $7 range is what you should be looking for. Steve Roach with TFNN. Dow's off 10, S&P's up 2. We'll be right back. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
The Taz Profile Scanner Plus, developed by John Logan and his team, is a standalone piece of software that can change the way you trade. Let the Taz Profile Scanner work for you by scanning over 5,000 financial instruments such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. Right now, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Taz Profile Scanner Plus right at TFNN.com. And when you sign up, you gain instant access to John Logan Logan's most recent webinar, How Price, Volume, and Time Make Market Profile So Unique. This hour-long webinar with John Logan will walk you through the most powerful features of the scanner and how you can use it to become a more successful and profitable trader. You pay absolutely nothing for 30 days while you try out this software risk-free. For more information on the Taz Profile Scanner and to get your 30-day free trial today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, the 800th edition of The Gold Report will be published next Monday. To celebrate the last 15 and a half years of calling the gold market, I'm doing a special promotion. You can receive 60 weeks of The Gold Report for only $600. That is $10 a week, which is a savings of 50% off the regular price. If you want to understand the entire supply and demand equations that move the gold market, including where the XAU, HUI, and mining equities are looking to trade, if you want to understand the correlation between the dollar, the yen, the South African rand, bonds, and gold, the gold report is for you. I'll give you the entry price, price target, and stop for each equity, ETF, future, or option trade. The gold report is a long-term newsletter with a focus on building real wealth to a successful portfolio of gold and silver equities. You can take advantage of this special promotion until August 27th. That's 60 weeks of the gold report for $600, which is a 50% savings. Go to the front page of TFNN.com or call 877-518-9190 and order now. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Thanks for all the uh, email questions. Uh, we've got a slew of them still. Uh, John in Sarasota. Hi, Steve. Uh, what do you see for SDS? And SDS is the uh, ProShares Ultra Short for the S&P 500. So, you know, John, the easiest way for me to answer that question is going to be to really look at the uh, SPY, the equity futures contracts, just as we did. So, um, and I don't know the time frame that you're looking for in trading. So any of you guys, when you're sending emails, many of you have, uh, but just always make sure that you give to me the time frame it is that you're looking for from a trading standpoint. Uh, so I'm just gonna have to just go with the flow here, which I like going with the flow. So the first answer to your question is I still, it, what's what's hanging out there right now, we don't have any kind of bullish reversal signal on. This is the daily chart, by the way, for the ES Mini. And this is where I get uh, my better information than looking at the spies. But we'll look at the spy too. Um, so you can also see what it is that I'm looking at. It's going to knock out a question that uh, we received from Michelle. So that's going to be, so we got a two for, two for one. In this case here, there's still really more movement to the downside. There, it looks like there is an A to B equals CD pattern that has unfolded on the daily chart for the ES Mini. Now, that price target is 24.15.75. We may have already hit it by getting to that 24.19 level. That is a possibility, right? Price came down to the weekly bottom of that profile box and it boinged right off of it. So that is a possibility out there that we've hit support. Interestingly enough, you see the Stevie red dash line out here, prices above that. Um, so that is a possibility we have found support. If we haven't, if we haven't, and that really, then, uh, uh, so you make sure you're using the stop inside your SDS trade. That's what you've got to do because the weekly level of support held. Let's say we wake up on uh, Sunday night, well, we're going to wake up Sunday morning, I hope. But Sunday night, you know, we go check out the futures and we see that they're just banging them out to the downside out here. We're trading below 24.19. Well, at 24.15, you've got the one-to-one, -one, A to B equals C D. Depends what kind of bar we have coming in there. Is it the type of bar that is just serving Jose Cuervo or is it serving all kinds of customers out there? You know, and I can't even name all those hard liquors. But in this case here, if it's going to head lower, there's other price targets. There's other Gartley buy 
patterns that are in play out here, such as 2400, really 2399 on the S, 2379, 2357. All those are open doors. What we need to see is some type of bullish reversal signal. Now, this is the first time that the ES mini here on this daily chart has taken on a swing point in some time. And that's important for us to really pay attention to. Uh, I included this in uh, this morning's newsletter because of the question that uh, we had um, uh, as well. And so I want to go ahead and share that because I mentioned I would show this on the show. And this was for an individual that says, hey, Steve, I listen to the show all the time. Um, I'm of a certain age that uh, is uh, going to preclude me from wanting to spend and invest the, the time to go ahead and learn all these great technical tools and patterns that you uh, that you show. But is there anything, in essence, I'm paraphrasing, is there anything that you can share with me to assist me in helping me to identify whether we're in a bear market or not? And, and the purpose of this question was for somebody that is in this for everybody, but this person has uh, is does not believe they're going to, to be around for 30 more years or 20 more years necessarily and says, look, I'm trying to protect my nest egg uh, for my beneficiaries. And what I don't want to do is go through another 2007 decline out there. That, in essence, was the question. So how does somebody without any technical knowledge know whether or not a new bear market has begun? Which is an excellent question. And so uh, the easy thing is, where is that chart out here? The easy thing is, uh, when we break swing points, that is when the dander on the back of my neck stands up. And so it stood up yesterday. You see, I talked about this Gartley by pattern. The Gartley by pattern, it's a beautiful pattern. It forms that A to B equals CD. And you're looking for that to complete. And by complete, I mean you need to see a bullish reversal signal at the end of that pattern. And then then that may be just a great buy because you're trying to catch a trend that is in place that you have missed. Now, here's where it doesn't work. We had a Gartley buy pattern in the NDX 100. Let me do this here first. Let me, it was really in the NQ. Um, I'll, I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it because we see what, let's, let me stay with the spy. Let me stay with the spy. When you break a swing point, just as we have done here, See, the only high that is really of significance to you is the one is the last high. But how do we know it's the last high out there in a declining or a beginning bear market looking at no other technicals? It is paying attention to a swing point. Now, a swing point here is just where you see the last significant bottom where price turns up. In the SPY out here, because everybody has access to it, August 10th, is the uh, low of 243.70. Yesterday's close below that says the dander on the back of your neck must stand up. Now, when this Gartley buy completes, and it will complete out here, we're then going to see one of five different outcomes. I will just simply let you say it was today. It's not today. I am not saying it's today. I'm saying if it was today, and this was the Gartley buy pattern, then you're looking at five potential outcomes. If this is not the beginning of a bear market or decline, you need it to get to outcome number four, which is 100% move of move, which means getting back to the highs out here. In the spies, that's 248.91. You can have a Gartley buy and only make the 0.382 retracement, or maybe the 0.618 retracement, or maybe the 0.786 retracement. And if that's it, and then you continue to take out another swing point to the downside. So let's go back and take a look at uh, uh, some history out here. That is when you know that you now are starting to have lower highs. It is just that simple. The lower highs, higher highs thing, where you're really measuring that is when you break a swing point. If there is one thing that Obi-Wan Kenobi has taught each of us, he just maybe hasn't communicated it this way, it is that when you break a swing point, that is when the market squawks, walks, and talks. But more important than that, it's what happens then when that Gartley pattern forms out here. You see, when you go off to form newer highs out there, then you haven't really started the bear market. Now, this is not for somebody that's trying to sell the top tick in the market. For example, let's just go back here. I think I've got this uh, cordon off for 2007. I've got it for 2000 as well. So it shows the same thing out here. If you take a look at coming off the high in 2007, okay, here's the highest high. That was on October 11th, 2007. What you start paying attention to out here is when you see 
key swing points that are broken. Well, actually, here's one. I didn't actually write it in, but we're going to do that right now, this little red line. Once this was broken, the question was, it's a green line instead of red, where did that next high come in? And you can see here, that was a Gertley buy pattern, by the way, and it only made outcome, it looks like outcome number two, maybe it was outcome number three, and it only it made a lower high. As soon as you see that taking place, that's your first indication that there is a correction or maybe the beginning of a bear market. And just watch each of those swing points, once they're crossed, where does that next bounce get you to? Does that form a lower high out there? So for someone who doesn't want to invest any time in technical analysis, this is about the easiest thing that we can show you and you can do it at home. It really isn't that hard. Steve Rhodes, you can go back and check it out on all your charts out there and you'll be like, son of a gun. You're not going to sell the top tech. You're not going to buy the bottom. We've got other tools for that. See you, Roger. See you Today, it's hard to tell if the economy is coming or going. Regardless, I want my money going in the direction I choose. If that's your stance as well, then you want to know how EverBank can help keep your money thriving just the way you want. Is growing your money a priority? EverBank is committed to a yield pledge promise to pay high yields on your checking, money market, and CD balances. Looking to diversify? EverBank ingeniously developed accessible ways to spread your money around the world into foreign currencies and even non-FDIC insured metals. And when it comes to your wealth, they bring a highly experienced and global perspective to help you manage it. Everbank's financial philosophy flies in the face of the status quo. They believe your money's performance should not be determined by today's economic circumstances, but by the drive to rise above them and create opportunities that favor your objectives. If that excites you like it does me, call 1-855-750-4051 to find out what they can do for you. That's 1-855-750-4051. Call them today. Everbank Bank is a member FDIC and equal housing lender. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. TFNN has put together the finest programming lineup each trading day, featuring some of the most knowledgeable and respected financial minds in the nation to educate traders and investors. On Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we broadcast eight hours a day starting at 9 a.m. as Larry Pesavento kicks us off with Trade What You See. Tuesdays and Thursdays, we broadcast 11 hours. Get an early and healthy start to your day as Nico and Paige bring you Living a Primal Lifestyle. Then catch Andy Hecht at 5 p.m. with the Commodities Hour following the Tom O'Brien Show. Swim Lessons from TD Ameritrade, Think or Swim is now at 11 a.m. Followed by Basil Chapman at 12 noon. See the TFNN program lineup via the link on the front page of TFNN.com to get a complete overview of our TFNN shows and hosts. And keep TFNN's Tiger TV tuned in on your mobile device, PC, or Mac for the latest financial news and information throughout the broadcasting day. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Join David White as he keeps you up to date on the latest tech stocks while he uses his Power Law Vector Indicator to identify the best trades. The Power Trading Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, uh, folks. So a couple of questions here in the next two minutes to get out. Uh, Todd wants to know what is gold doing? And uh, what gold has just done, if we take a look at it, 
couple of different patterns that are out here that you and I like to pay attention to. Number one today was a seventh wave move. Now, we don't know if that's going to be the completion of the seventh wave. You won't know unless there's not a new high come Sunday night, Monday during the trading session. But you have a seventh wave move right up at resistance. Again, resistance inside of the gold contract. This is the December gold contract set up right here by this little bear sash candle back on April the 19th. Now, that says it was the high of the prior session, uh, which is right at the 1307.50 level. We can see how 1307.50 was resistance back here on June 6. Price just simply stopped there. We stopped just short of it. As we speak right now, this is close to being a little doji candle. If there's basically unchanged for the day, that would be a doji candle. A doji candle up at resistance has a lot of meaning. It's actually a bearish signal, a bearish signal if the following trading session uh, price trades lower. That just says that the apples would be falling off of the trees. In this case here, it'd be the Krugerrands. Now, those Krugerrands would really be falling off the trees if they close below 1285 at any point in time. That is Stevie's red line. Then that says you make a beeline down to support 1265, 1262 or 66, somewhere right around there is going to be the first level of support. You break through that, you're all the way back down to the bottom of the consolidation. What we have going on right now as we speak inside of Goldilocks is nothing more than your good old consolidation pattern. Has not broken through resistance. Whether it is on this daily chart that we look at or whether it is on this weekly chart, which you and I have paid attention to, the 1293.60 level, the top of that weekly box. So, Todd, that is what's going on there. Real quickly here, there was a question about uh, John Deere. Uh, this listener wants to go ahead and take a short-term trade on it. So it sounds like you've already done that. This thing gapping down this morning into a breakout area that had uh, May 19th, 11 million shares. You've done 9 million shares. Be careful, my friend. Let me see where those profile levels are at. Come on real quickly out here. Where's the daily? Where's the weekly? Uh, you might only get 119.08. That's your resistance zone, my friend. Folks, have a great weekend. Fabulous, fantastic weekend. We'll see you on Magnificent Marvelous Monday. Thank you. Larry Pesavento has just started his brand new service, Fibonacci 24-7, and he's already delivering content to his subscribers on a daily basis when the market's opened and even on weekends. Each Monday, you'll receive Larry's written report that provides detailed commentary and a summary on the charts and videos that Larry sends out. And throughout the week, when warranted, Larry will send out via charts or videos or both the key markets that he is watching during the day. This will be up-to-the-date active trading information that will help you in your daily trading. In Larry's first week alone, he sent out 25 charts, six videos, and a full report to his subscribers in just one week. If you're a technical trader that uses patterns and retracements to trade, then Larry's service Fibonacci 24-7 is something that you must try. Right now, new subscribers can get a full 30-day money-back guarantee. With nothing to risk, sign up now to Larry Pesavento's Fibonacci 24-7 by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under Trading Newsletters.